Hi, I'm Sean West, and today we're going to tie a bait fish pattern. This one here is called a hoofly, and it was invented by Johnny King over on the East Coast. I think he lives in the Jersey area. He likes going for stripers and whatnot, but I thought we'd give it a try today. Um, so the hook I'm going to be using is going to be a Gamakatsu SL. 1, 2, S, and this one a, just happens to be a 2 watt. Um, the tail is going to be a select crafter. Let's see here, got some of that right here. I'm going to use white and olive on this one. And for the head, I'm going to use a Sanyo's laser yarn. I'm going to use white and I'm going to use olive. And for the eyes, I'm going to use a fish skull, the living eyes, seven millimeter, and this happens to be wind. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna try to tie this without the lights on. We'll see how well that works out. Hopefully, I won't have to go to it. Um, I didn't mention my 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 thread is gonna be uh, a a a a point one millimeter vivis monofilament thread so what we're going to do here is i'm going to take a little drop of some nail cement super glue it, it, it dries in five seconds i'll show you a photo of the, the bottle in a second here there you go if you're interested then we're going to wrap on our thread Now I'm kind of a <laughs> rusty on tying this pattern, so hopefully I, I'm not going to mess it up and I'll, I'll, I'll do Mr. King's pattern right because it's a great pattern to fish with. Durable, easy to tie. So one of the things I got a bad habit of, of doing is I, um, I, I overdress this pattern. So I need to work on that a little bit. So I'm just about at the, at the hook barb, or I'm sorry, yeah, at the barb. I got it right the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some white craft fur. I'm not going to take a whole lot of it. And we'll put that on for the, the base of our tail. And I'm going to keep a little bit of the under fur on for bulk. Um, once I get done with this pattern, if, you, if you're not happy with the results, um, um, Johnny has, has um, a, a video on this pattern, and it's called the Kinky Muddler. You can see it on YouTube. It's a little different, but he still does the V-tie, and uh, I think you'll find it interesting. So... Don't eat all this, but I, I don't want to do it flat, so we're just going to have a slight taper there. And then we're going to get some olive. It's a lot harder doing this without the light, I can tell you that, but that's just because I'm getting older. Now, with this fly, I fish it usually with either a, a sink tip line or or a, a full sink and the reason is because this head is hollow and it holds air and it's, just, it's very hard to sink so just so you know that's just how I do it so we're gonna stick our olive on top make a few wraps then I'll, I'll put some wraps underneath both of them there a little bit all right that's it for our um, our tail let me just stick a little drop of glue on there because I like to secure it pretty well if I can and then we'll get on to our um, our body and like I say I got a really bad habit of, 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 of overdressing the body so I'm gonna advance the thread just a little bit I'm gonna take my white laser yarn 
I'll take a small handful out about like so. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'm just going to uh, straighten all the fibers as much as I can so that they're all going in the same direction. And what I'm going to do is what they call a V-tie. So I'm, I'm tying this one is is going to go in on the bottom. I'm going to tie it in in the center of my clump. And I tie it into a V. So there's a, a chunk on one side, a chunk on the other side. I turn it over, I get my olive, and I do the same thing. I grab a small piece like so. And I'm just going to get those fibers all going in the same direction. Have something like this. And again, I'll tie it in as a V on top of the hook shank this time. There we go, I finally caught it. Advance my thread to, to, to halfway down the hook shank. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'll, I'll take some white. Straighten our fibers. Now, for colors, the sky is the limit. If you want to do 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 a bluegill, I'd go with the white or, or even a yellowish with an olive, and then on on the last chunk, I'll put in a little bit of orange, just for that orange breast. Then you can mark this up with stripes if you want. It's up to you. Make sure that the, the white's on the bottom. Like I said, it'd be easier if I had more light, but I want you to see what I'm doing here. And we go all the way up to the head. And we're going to do the white again, but we're going to do something a little different this time. Instead of doing a V-tie, we're going to um, be, be tying it in perpendicular to, I'm sorry, parallel to the hook shank. Put a little bit more in there. Like I say, I have a tendency to overdress these things. Hopefully I'm not going to do it this time. We'll see. I haven't done these in a while, like I say. So we'll see what we get here. Hopefully I'm doing this fly justice because it's a great pattern, folks. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of roll that around so it's on the hook. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the olive. It's pretty... It's not really a very... Um... um What's the term I'm looking for here? Okay, I'm not able to do... Oh, it, it is not really a super complex pattern. But obviously, it takes a little practice, like with any other flighty tie. Okay, I'm just going to push all that back. Make a wrap. Then I'll push all the white back. And build up a dam here. Then, if I can get my whip finishing tool... And I always do two whip finishes, it doesn't matter what I'm tying. Pretty rare I only do one. Okay, now then, what we're going to do next is, is, is we, we need to, to comb in all of this, um, all, all of the, uh, the yarn there. So I'm going to use um, a dog brush, and I'm just going to brush it through. I'm not going to get too aggressive with it, but I want to blend this in as, as well as I can. Okay. 
Now, once I get this where I'm happy with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to break out some, um, it's called a liquid fusion. And what I did is I bought you know, a bottle of the stuff, but then I put it in a smaller bottle with a brush on it. That way it's easier to work with. So if I'm happy with this, and it's looking pretty good if you ask me. And again, I'm biased. Now, like I say, you could uh, uh, um, marker this up and have, have stripes in it and whatnot. I'm keeping it awful simple here. So what we're going to do, and, and, and Johnny says you do not need a lot. Actually, I'm going to back up a little bit. Let's put the, the, the eyes in first, and then I'll worry about the, um, the liquid fusion. Sorry about that. So let me get a couple of eyes out. And we'll go from there. Now, for the eyes, I'm going to use a, a Loctite Hooper Glue Gel. That's, that's this stuff here. And it, a lot better than your standard super glue. The, the, the gel makes things, it, it makes it a, a lot easier to work with this stuff. So, let me get an eye ready to go. I just got it on, on, on a bodkin. So, let's see if we can do this in the dark. You don't need a whole lot of this stuff, okay? That's something else that you have to have to have to realize. You, you don't need much, but you, you know what I do need? I need some more lights. So bear with me for just a second here, okay? And I don't know if you could say that, but there's not a lot of glue on there, okay? Let me put the cap on my glue. Throw this eye on. I don't like that though, I can put it on like this. Then I'll put some glue on, well, I'll get my other eye ready to go. Of course it doesn't want to behave. There we go. And we'll make a, another little drop of glue here. Let me see where I'm at. Right about there, I think should work. I hope I got enough glue on there, should be fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to put that right on there. Make sure they're kind of balanced. It's important. You want them to be, be balanced from side to side, top to bottom. They look pretty good there. So, now I'll take my liquid fusion, and again, we don't need a lot of this stuff. Less is best, according to um, Mr. King. So, I just got a little drop on here, and I'm going to start it at the eye of the hook and just go back. And again, you, you don't need a lot. You can always add more later if you have to. Now on the bottom, I'm going to go back a little farther because I don't want this to be be getting wrapped around the hook shank. Usually it doesn't, but now I've never met a Mr. King, but one of these days, hopefully, I'm going to make it out to this Somerset show or the. Um, the Fly Tire Symposium, because I think he lives out that way, because I'd love to actually watch him, uh, watch him do this himself. Now that I got that on there, what I'm going to do is wet my finger and shape this fly how I want it, okay? You can do this like a bluegill shape. You can do it with, um, you know, so that it's flat. It's really up to you what you want for the shape. Now, when this stuff dries, it shrinks a little bit, okay? So you need to keep that in mind as you shape this thing. I kind of like that right about there is the shape I'm looking for. And I could spend another half hour as, as, as I do with most of my flies, you know, just tweaking it. But once it's dry, like I say, it, it's hollow, and it has a lot to give. So, but that's about it right there. 
hopefully this has helped you out and if, if you tie them be sure to to, 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 to fish them because I, I think you're going to be very happy with the results thanks for watching have a great day bye bye